that's Ross here. Uh, next steps were to sort of survey the boat, see all the bits and pieces that are on board uh, when I bought it, and uh, make some plans for what we're going to do with uh, do with things to get it sorted. Uh, so the first thing we've got is the um, anchor rope area. It's got a bit of cut out vinyl on it, um, a bit of matting. Actually looks like it might work quite well to keep everything off the bottom, protect the fiberglass from the chain, and there's obviously a drain hole. Uh, we've got a hatch with a cigarette lighter adapter and then a pull lock that's broken so this is now opens the whole time but uh, other than that it looks okay. There's a bit of running down the side there that's from a internal hinge that had rusted through um, so the water was leaking down into it. The uh, previous owner has since repaired that so that's purely cosmetic and just watching that over the, the last few weeks over winter it hasn't brought any more water in so that's all looking pretty good. Uh, the trailer's in pretty good nick. Um, it's got a secure lock for the um, hitch, so that's worked quite well, and a beach jockey wheel as well as a, uh, a regular jockey wheel. Some of these ratchets are looking a little bit rusted, I might want to sort them out as well. Um, broadly everything's looking okay, not too much rust on the trailer, a bit of problems with the, the striping on the side will need a fix as well. Alright, coming inside the boat we've got vinyl seats in pretty good nick, uh, a bit of loose fabric here I'll need to try and sort out. Uh, the old original anchor and rope, not a Danforth anchor, this is the other type of, can't quite remember the name, um, they work reasonably well, certainly for smaller boats, um, the Danforths tend to be more popular in, uh, in Auckland on the Hauraki, uh, up in here, a bit of loose brackets we'll need to sort out, um, UHF appears to function, fish finder, all included in the boat which was pretty good, um, steering, OMC control, and then uh, dials for RPM and then also the tilting as well which is uh, proving quite useful and then obviously switch gear as well to turn everything on or off. Um, interior of the boat's reasonably clean, uh, needs a bit of a scrub, we've obviously got all the storage under here that you get in your fleet lines which are quite useful. A couple of different designs, I've seen ones that have got um, sort of brackets that run along here um, for more storage, not this boat. Uh, an old fire hydrant that's probably expired, I'll probably replace that. Uh, more storage under here, again looking pretty good. Uh, bait board, this came with the boat as well, also reasonably well used. Uh, brace for that, uh, it hooks up here on the back of the boat, the baseboard clips on top. One fuel tank, bits of old rope, ear muffs for the outboard to washing it out. Um, this has a separate oil unit, um, battery, extra fuel tank, some more ropes and one bumper which uh, you can use particularly if you're doing solo and you're trying to stop the boat from getting terribly up. And then also, also here things are looking a little bit uh, dirty and unloved. Overall the gel coat's in reasonable condition up here and then phase down here so I might try and sort that out as well. A couple of cup holders on both sides. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the interior. I'll just uh, have a look at the uh, engine as well. Alright, so when I bought this boat uh, I knew very little about outboard engines, very little about this one as, as well. Um, there was no manuals or any information about it, I had to buy it reasonably blind. However the buyer did, the, uh, the, the vendor did actually go and get it serviced for me. It cost about $600. So I've got the receipts for that, uh, that was well worth getting them to do that, it's worth getting somebody to do that, especially if the boat's been sitting for a while, you don't know when it was last serviced. So we've got no idea on engine hours on this, um, it is what it is. Um, I do know it's a B60 TL ECM, which is uh, basically an OMC 60 horse with tilt um, and full electrics and a control module which comes to the boat, which is what you would have seen up, up there as well. Um, it's got some uh, trim fins on the bottom, some extra trim fins, uh, and the propeller's in reasonable condition as well. Um, I'll pop the uh, I'll pop this open and we can have a look inside that as well. All right, let's get this open and have a look inside. Okay, so starting to learn a little bit more about these motors, um, I was able to purchase a manual online. I'll put the link for that in the. Uh, in the, the notes so that if anybody else needs to track one down they can. Um, again no idea on hours on this engine um, which is a problem with these ones back then they didn't have engine hour meters on them 
I've since installed one, I'll cover that in a, another video. Very quick and easy job. Um, the engine hour meters themselves are only about $20 or $30, so pretty easy to do and definitely worthwhile to keep track of it from moving forward. Um, these do actually have a pull start. You can put a, a rope around these and pull them start if, if you need to. Um, I've been trying and haven't succeeded yet, trying to get a bit of practice, but I've got a booster battery if you ever need to. Um, the battery on this boat appears to be a bit ropey, so uh, I might need to replace it at some point as well. Um, overall the condition of the motor seems pretty good. Uh, as I say, I don't know much about them, but it looks pretty clean. It runs pretty well. Um, I've got a um, some cleaner product that I can use to um, to get, get the uh, carburetors in better condition, which I'll do in a separate video as well. But um, at least you can see the output here. I think these came in uh, three different sizes. 70, 60 and 90. Oh, 50, 60 and 70 was the different sizes they came in. Um, I think it's overall it's just a slightly different displacement. Um, three cylinder, three spark plugs on the back. Um, pretty straightforward. So yeah, I will um, I will share more about this in uh, future videos. All right, I also just wanted to show you with the uh, canopy that came on the boat when I bought it. Um, I'm not sure if it's an original canopy. It's pretty old. Um, it looks like it's been here long enough to protect the, the gel coat. If you compare, you know, before and after, it's very chalky down here and it's still reasonable up there, so it's been here for a while. Um, one of the issues with it is that it doesn't capture this area here at all, so a lot of the runoff from the boat goes down here. If you get any leaves or anything, it gets stuck in there and this fills up with water, which is not that useful. Similar issue up the front. Uh, it doesn't cover the front of the boat at all, so this is all exposed and gel coats and worse for wear. This also has a drain hole if you get any leaves, uh, as you do when you're unpacked under trees. This will fill up, causes this to fill like a sink. Uh, it can run out, but also it sits in the tube, and actually the seal doesn't appear to be great just around this top part just here, so that will slowly drip into the boat as well. So I think I'm going to get an extra cover that covers the whole boat, um, probably for next winter. Um, maybe once I've tried to restore the gel coat. The other thing that I've noticed is these domes. Uh, these can pop off if you're rough with them. I've replaced several of them um, already. Um, I think the general theory is go with stainless steel, stick with stainless steel. Um, you don't want to be in a situation where um, you're using aluminium rivets and stainless steel domes. Um, they will corrode and you'll have issues.